I'm back with another video. It's, um, what time is it? It is 6.31 a.m. It is Monday morning. I believe it's the 10th. Maybe? I think so. I'm not sure. I'm not too sure on that. But it's a Monday morning, and I'm on my way to work. And so I slept pretty good yesterday. Um, went to bed pretty early. Um, my mood yesterday was okay. You know, I was still having a lot of things going around in my circling around in my head. You know, I was thinking about how sometimes, you know, other people have a hard time getting motivated. So they create competitions. Like, I think that's what my, my siblings did, my uh, former siblings. I think that um, they are not the kind of people who, um, they're not, they're not the kind of people who, um, who enjoy things just because they enjoy it. They have to, you know, kind of, create some sort of competition in order for them to be motivated. Some people are like that. I'm not like that. I don't I don't like to compete. I like to keep other people out of my life as much as I possibly can. I mean, of course you want people in your life. You do. I mean, I do. I mean, I, I would be very happy to find the right people to, you know, associate with. But, you know, I, I, I don't, I do everything I can to avoid toxic relationships, which is one of the reasons why I'm keeping to myself at this point. Because, you know, my family, my ex-family, and <laughs> has um, pretty much polluted a lot of people, you know, and I, I'm going to say particularly uh, my ex-sister, Tanya, um, with her, I don't know, her competition and her um, controlling, unjustified controlling attitude, um, I, I don't care or owe her anything, you know, if she arranged jobs for me in the past, I, I certainly never asked her to, and um, I, like I said, my contract is with the employer, and I don't believe in having those kind of family, I don't believe in mixing family and work, unless, of course, it's a family-run business or something, where everybody is, like, you know, vested into the business, they care about it, like, you know, because some people take their family business for granted, you know, they don't care, um, they're just happy that they have a job, and they'll do the, uh, very little to get by. And then some people, they, they care about their family, they see that this is something that's really important, so they'll, they'll throw all their talents, and each individual person contributes to the growth of their family business, and I think that's great, you know. But it's all consensual, of course, it should be. I know in the beginning it's not, because sometimes kids get, you know, they want their kids to work in their business, or in the summertime, or whatever. But when the kid gets older, they can either decide to stick around and help it grow, or they can go and branch out on their own, whatever they want to do, but whatever they should do, whatever whatever the case, they should be enthusiastic and they should be, you know, full, full on, 100% contributors to the success of that business. When it comes to, um, you know, working and stuff like that, unless, of course, this person doesn't have any sort of ulterior motive, like, you know, like my sister, my ex-sister. Um, you know, because in their mind, they think, well, I, I, I gave you something, you owe me something, I don't owe you shit. I don't owe you a goddamn thing, okay? Um, you can sit here and, like, try to manipulate things behind the scenes, which I know you have, okay? But, like, the ultimate thing is, if this was to go to court, which really, it should be going to court, it should be, um, um, the contract would be through the, the, the employer, and I would win. I would win hands down. I would win. See, the thing is that it's hard to take things to court after it's been such a, um, after a long period of time. And when I, back, all, even going back to 2014, I was seeking legal action before I realized my family was involved in this. I was, but they were telling me, oh, well, you, you, you know, should have waited. I mean, you shouldn't have waited so many months or whatever. But I kept getting screwed over, over more and more and more and more. And I kept thinking, I'm getting more and more angry. Um, what am I going to do? And then I started reading information about how, like, if you have been working in a certain field or whatever, and you have not been able to find a job in that field after a certain period of time, you can create a lawsuit. And so I think that my family was counting on me um, to, I don't know what, what the deal is or why they launched this investigation. They've always been, like, you know, stalking me and stuff, which I don't appreciate. But they're trying to prove a point. The, the point is, is that... Um, if I had a stalker, okay, like for example, I believe that uh, the guy from high school was stalking me, 
That has nothing to do. I had nothing to do with that. I had no idea he was even even around. Okay, but um, that has nothing to do with anything. That's not my fault. And you can say, oh, well, it's because you dress nice at work. You're supposed to dress nice at work, and it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, is that you know I'm not saying that he should have been stalking me. Okay, but at the same time, I shouldn't be blamed. And, you know, and accused of things that I had no knowledge of. It took me a very long time to figure out what was going on. Okay, a very long time. And once again, even though this punishment doesn't make any sense, it's the scapegoating attitude. You know, maybe my sister Tanya wishes she had a stalker. She wishes she had a stalker. Maybe a secret admirer or something. I don't know what it is, but, you know, it's unjustified. And I'm not going to make any agreements with Tanya because... I didn't ask for it. Like, I don't see her at all. I don't, I rarely see her. She lives in Montrose, California. At least that's the last I know of her. You know, for some reason, in the back of my mind, I keep thinking something tragic happened to her. Or maybe it's because I wanted to. You know what I mean? I don't even know if she's alive, or she's sick, or she, I don't know. But I keep getting this feeling that, I don't know what it is about her, but something's creepy about her. Because um, I haven't seen her in a long time. But anyway... Um, she's off. She's mentally off. You know, uh, I think she watches me a little too closely. It's, it, she's just one of those people who need to compete. I, I, I don't care. I don't want to compete with anyone. I want to go on and do things in my life. I, I want it to do in my life. I want it to enjoy my life. You know what I mean? I want it to do What I do in my life is because of my own pure employment. That's it. I don't do it for anyone else. I think most people don't even want to deal with the kind of stuff that I deal with. You know, they don't want to sit here and like the kind of movies I like. They don't want to listen to my, the kind of music I like to listen to. Some of it might. They might. But, you know, I, they don't like necessarily like the kind of clothes I wear. I, but I live for myself. And I believe in that. I believe in living for yourself. Okay? Um, I don't believe in... Uh, family obligations. I, I believe that, like my, my son, I have a son, right? I don't believe that he's obligated to me in any way. I don't want to sit here and influence him, pressure him, make him feel like he's supposed to do something in his career to make me happy. What I want my son to do is thrive and be happy. And that's his choice, how he chooses to thrive. I would encourage him not to do anything unethical, of course, right? And be kind to other people and whatever. I understand that in life there's competitors that are going to treat you unfairly or whatever. But I hope that my son uh, lives a decent life, is basically all I'm saying, okay? To the best of his ability, because we're all human, right? And that's all I expect of him. I don't expect him to, well, I want him to do this. I want my son to do this kind of work. I want my, I would never do that. I would never deprive my son of his heartfelt wishes or things that, responsibilities that he needs to take care of for himself. Okay? Only, only, only one kind of person would do that is a selfish person. Okay? And obviously my sister Tanya is extremely selfish. So this goes out to Karen Johnson, Steve Murray, Craig Jahelka, probably goes up back all the way over there, um, even all the way back to um, my first accounting job, which I got on my own. I took the initiative to do that on my own, and I wanted to build from that, and I've seen plenty of, plenty of people who built themselves from that, right? Um, I never needed you guys. Never. Never needed you guys. What I needed was just to, you know, be on my own. Yeah, that's all I ever wanted. I mean, I, I mean, I never wanted to uh, purposely desert you, but I certainly never wanted you guys involved in my work. Ever. I don't believe in mixing family and work. And I sure as hell don't believe in, in mixing, um, you know, this whole conjugal situation. I think my family wanted me to stay married to Joel, maybe. Um, and I remember Joel and I talking many years ago. And I, I, and, um, I left Joel back in 2014 because I suspected his family was involved in my work, which is a no no. You do not um, handle, you do not manipulate my employment 
they keep that sort of stuff, stuff a secret. So I blame Jim Culligan for that. You know what I mean? Um, I, I now realize that my ex-husband was with his mom in a, you know, in a relationship with his mom, which I think is strange, okay? But I didn't know about it until I started really opening, I guess, my, my intuition or my psychic centers because of everything that was going on around me. And then I realized that something was going on. And whether he had, he did, he, he, you know, the main thing is, anybody who abuses you like that, they know what's going on with your work, okay? Your source of income, your ability to survive, all right? And they don't tell you, and they're manipulating things behind the strings. I don't trust you anymore. I can't trust you, and I can't feel any love towards you. I can't. You know what I mean? So that's why I left Joel. I left him back in 2014. And then when I got back to my place in Lancaster, I think my family thought that I was seeing Stephen Lyles at the time. It had nothing to do with Stephen Lyles. Because if I was, you know, I was in Lancaster living with my mom at the time. And if I was seeing Stephen Lyles, I would have been out seeing Stephen Lyles. I would have been out doing things, okay? I was pretty much staying at home. Um, rarely went anywhere. I was extremely depressed. They gave me this shitty job in Los Angeles that was pointless. I was isolated. It was horrible, right? Um, you know, I think my family wanted me to stay married to Joel. And maybe it's because, like I said, maybe because his aunt Esther had all these, you know, financial... I mean, she, my, my sister thought that Esther was established or something. I don't know what it is. But, you know, I never wanted that sort of marriage. You know what I mean? When I got together with Joel, Joel and I were like, you know, we, I got considered us to be pretty good friends. We're buddies. We enjoyed each other's company at the time. Um, and I remember he and I would have discussions. Not, you know, he was never like a husband, husband, okay? But he and I had discussions about, you know, how he thought it was wrong. He, he told me this many years ago, how he thought it was wrong, how people go after each other for alimony. I remember him and I have this conversation, and yet to me, for somebody to try to take and, and mess with your job like that, is kind of like a form of that, you know what I mean? So I think that Jim Culligan um, uh, created the rifts, okay? Um, eventually, I'm sure I would have found out that um, Joel was with his mom. I would have eventually found that, figured that out, you know? I'm sure I would eventually have figured that out. Um, even if I wasn't getting stalked, okay? And I probably would have dealt with that uh, appropriately. Probably would have left anyway. But, um, when you do that to a person, you take someone's ability, I don't care who you are, I, I, don't, I don't approve of that. And that's why I left Joel. So, my sister thought that I was seeing Stephen Lyles and wanted me to uh, stay with Joel or whatever. So when my family, when I was staying in Lancaster, uh, my sister Lisa was acting very strange and, um, and she even kind of admitted that she was looking for work for me and then she called and started acting like it was these fake crying, she was pretending like she was crying like, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry what's happening to you, we're going to figure this out and I figured, I knew she was faking it and I started to become afraid of my sister and I kept thinking, okay, maybe my, my family my blood relations are working against me and maybe Joel's innocent, maybe he had nothing to do with it then I went back to Joel, right and then I started understanding more and more stuff and realized he had a relationship with his mom. And then I started getting really scared. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do here. I, I can't deal with this. I can't deal with this. I'm not comfortable with it. So eventually, you know, I got a job working over at the manufactured homes place. And I ended up moving out on my own. And that was the best thing for me. Okay. Um, I know that Joel tried to contact me a few times. I wasn't very enthusiastic about talking to him. And then he got angry and sent me a picture of him setting like one of the old refrigerator magnets I made and had in the kitchen. He set it on fire and sent it to me. And uh, it's like, you know, I, I was becoming overstimulated. I mean, I was like too, um, things were becoming too weird for me. Like, you know, um, I couldn't trust anybody, you know. It, it's like, you know, that's unacceptable to me. It's unacceptable. 
I will say though, I I had no connection to Stephen Miles at all. Okay, um, when you prevent people from moving on with their life um, by contacting previous employers, I'm referring to Craig Jahelka, um, Steve Murray, Karen Johnson, all these people, and a bunch of agencies and all this other stuff to try to keep somebody trapped. Um, it's wrong, you know. It's wrong. Okay, just because you were me, you may have been a reference in in, in, in in previous times. Doesn't give you the right to do that. Now I understand, you know, you've created all kinds of bullshit, and I, I probably won't ever get back into the field that I was doing. You know, and then I'm forced to find something new to do. Um, I really don't know exactly what that is, but the thing is, is that whatever I choose to do, that's my choice. You know what I mean? I, I really don't have anything else or idea of anything what I want to do for a living. I really have no idea. No idea. None whatsoever. I know it's got to be office work because that's all I really know. And that's what I'm comfortable doing. You know what I mean? Um, it's, un it's unfortunate because I think I was pretty good at accounting. You know? Um, was I a CPA level? No. But I think I was pretty good at accounting and I, I liked it a lot. And it was something that really brought me a lot of contentment. It didn't make me feel agitated. I, it really stimulated me. I enjoyed it. It was like, you know, I could sit there all day long and just, you know, work on stuff. You know, and I, I enjoyed that. But whatever. Um, so, my sister Tanya, uh, like I said, she, I mentioned her religion, her religious views, and everything. And I never agreed. When I got married to Joel, I never agreed to converting to that religion. Um, I did go to a church a few times to try to check it out and stuff, but then I realized that you know, I didn't like the churches. I didn't like the ones that I visited. I, I visited a lot of them. I gave, I gave it a fair shot, you know, and it just wasn't my thing, you know. I think my sister Tanya is really dumb. I think she um, thinks that you're supposed to grant people jobs based on their level of maturity, okay, and her, mat and her definition of maturity is, of course, very you know, uh, precise, and it's based on what she personally believes should be, and I, that's not it, your employment is based on the skills that you acquired, okay, the skills you acquired, and, and, and your ability to do these kind of things, to carry out this task, so that's based on, you know, whether you like the fact that, um, you know, it, basically, what she's trying to do is she wants to control somebody, she wants to dominate, bully somebody and I don't owe you her I don't owe Tanya anything if you got me the job a job at one time thank you for it okay but at the same time you know the chaos that you created in the workplace created it was it was useless so in, in actuality she didn't do anything for me okay so I'm tired of her already you know um as a matter of fact, I, I might, um, I'm, I'm going to handle that my own way, okay, but, um, you know, when people tell you to get out of their life, respect it, respect it, okay, when it comes to, and I was thinking also, <clears throat> when it comes to um, this sort of, you know, let me set people up in jobs and stuff like that because I can bully them further, and that's exactly what you're doing, you're bullying people. Um, when I reported this over at the Valley Homes place, whatever, his responsibility to me at that time was to protect me. I was supposed to be protected. And once you sit there and not, not notify an employer that you are dealing with a domestic stalking issue, it is his responsibility or their responsibility to make sure that uh, you're going to be protected. Okay? Uh, why? Because when, when you're dealing with domestic stalking, they often set uh, you up in jobs to control you. And if they don't like anything that you do, okay, then they will abuse you. They will terminate you. Like, I believe she had me terminated at my other job over at um, Flourishing Park, right? And the, the, the chaos that was going on over there was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Mary Landucci was absolutely over the top ridiculous, okay? Um, and it, it becomes a mobbing situation, okay? So what they do is they they expel you. From, I got expelled from um, uh, organized sports 
Oh, Grace Ford, sorry. Um, flourishing part. Um, and really, I was I was doing everything I possibly could to, you know, of course, it was it was a lot of unorganized staff people that really weren't on board with certain things, which kind of frustrated me. But I did my best to do my job. I didn't like the environment because it was toxic. I had people coming in there, you know, and overly focusing their attention on me. And the reason why people overly overly, overly focus their attention on me is not because of me. It's not because I'm well groomed or anything like that. It's because I have these stalkers that tell people to do the things that they do. Okay? And that's why it happens. And so all of this is their fault. Every single last bit of it. So when Anna, when I got terminated over at the Valley Manufacturing Place, um, that was wrong. I should not have been. He shouldn't have made, really, what, what they should do, and I don't know how the Department of Human Trafficking handles stuff here. Um, I don't think they do a good, very job, good job, and it's a concern because they ignore certain things. Uh, like most like most people, they don't really see, um, uh, they, they're blind to it. They don't understand. They, they, I don't even know if they really understand um, cases of human trafficking when they see it, okay? Uh, of course, there's more severe cases of human trafficking than me, mine, because there are some people who are in the, the same house with their handlers, and they are being sexually abused, physically abused, but still, you know, any time somebody is trying to squash the human rights of another human being, people should take notice, okay? So this is a human trafficking issue, all right? So once I got left left the valet manufacturing place, I was on un, un, unemployment and I wanted to get back to work as soon as possible. But you know, my lazy, lazy family, ex-family, oh it's three, okay wait. They took forever to find me another job. And see, if it wasn't for their rumor campaigns and their stupid assuming that I was running around seeing somebody, um, I would have been able to find another job right away. I don't want to work with these people. I don't want them finding me jobs. You know, what she, what Tanya is, she's, she's in competition with me. Okay, she thinks because, like I said, she's got her bachelor's degree, and she feels as though since she's like, you know, uh, a, a so-called, I call her a so-called Christian woman because she doesn't act like a Christian woman, but, you know, the way they, they should act anyway. She thinks as though she's got superior, and if she feels superior, then go be superior somewhere else. All right, go be superior somewhere else. I don't want you to hear me. I don't want anything to do with you, okay? So, anyway. Um, and I am going to be doing some stuff to, to, to take care of this. I'm sick of it. I'm really tired of it. Um, so, you know, so she thought that I was going to... My point is this. What difference does it make? Why do you care who I see? I'm not seeing anybody right now. Okay, and I probably, I, you know, I'm, I'm not. I have no interest. I care about my survival. That's what I care about. Um, but what difference does it make? Is it because this guy had a mental disability? I think Tanya has a mental disability. Like I said, you know, I'm not, I don't, I don't care about that. But you don't tell me who I'm supposed to see, what I'm supposed to do. And, and that is not based on who you're in a relationship with. It just isn't. You know what I mean? Um, I can't sit here and, and figure out, you know, worry about, you know, relationships and stuff like that when I'm a older woman who should be, you know, pretty subtle by now, meaning I should be in, in doing things that I'm content with right now and um, feeling safe and secure or, or safe and secure as you can feel, you know what I mean? Um, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to be with him or not. And even if I was, even if he was to come into my life right now, there's no guarantee that I'm going to marry him. So why, why be in a state of limbo? You know what I mean? This is stupid. I think some of these weird fundamentalist groups, they focus so much attention on, um, you know, the woman and her husband. Her husband is the, the head of everything. And, 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 and there's nothing necessarily wrong with that. But I don't have a husband. Okay? So in my case... Um, I need to move on and do what I need to do, okay, without obstruction, without some weird bitch, you know, calling employers and, and you know, trying to arrange my life or, or trying to get a, uh, what do you call it, a French, 
front pay, front seat and stalking me. I don't want this bullshit anymore. Okay. Um, my, my thing is, is that, you know, many women get hung up in this program, um, who are single. Okay. And I think a lot of the reason why is because of this issue right here. Okay. Um, I, I don't want my life revolving around a, 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 a relationship that may or may not happen. And like I said, whether somebody is rich or poor, I got to get on with my life anyway. Okay. And I choose to get on with my life without my fam, my ex family. Okay. So I'm going to go pick up the mail here at my workplace. And I'm getting ready to start my day. I hope everyone who is not a perp has a great day and I'll be back with another video later. Bye.